Good evening. I wrap staying with your metal market wrap up, and this wrap up is for the evening of Monday, first day of spring, March twentieth, twenty twenty three, and we're right now. I'm looking at it about the three. I'm sorry, four forty three p.m. Central Time. So I'm not at the opening. I have an important friend's birthday dinner tonight, so I've got to get this out for you, and I, I want to get it done. So I apologize for being earlier. I'd like to do these when the markets are already open. So. We're at the point where traders galore are now pricing in that the Fed's going to pivot again and they're going to have to go down in interest rates. And I just, I'm not in that camp yet. I, I realize that the emotions of the day and the banking take hold. I do agree that what's going to play out in time now is the economy's going to slow even more because it, let's assume you're a mid-sized bank in the center of America and you have loans on your book and they're coming due. Do you want to be the guy that uh, extends it and it doesn't work? That's what you're dealing with. So the scrutiny that's going to go in is going to make some of those loans not work. Real estate's especially an area, especially non-performing real estate, where what do you do with it? And how long do you keep the money going towards it? And, you know, it's one thing when you say, well, here's the value, we're okay. The world changed with all these banking issues that just happened. And if you take a look tonight at my um, spider ETF video, I show you First Republic Bank. And this stock just keeps going down. It fell another 47% today. So while everybody's rosy and they're saying, ah, you know, Credit Suisse is done, that's in the rear view mirror, and we're going to have other banks helping out, folks, it doesn't always work that way. As you can see, the boards are now wiping themselves out, as they always do as we get to a quarter to five. And then the, they're, what they do is they reset, and then at five, they'll come back with uh, the highs and lows. So as we take a look at gold, gold's been a stellar performer. It's done its job. I did my job in saying that I thought on the daily charts in the April gold, 1815 to 1810 was going to be an important area, and that's where the support came in. I was right on the money, and we've since rallied dramatically. The hardest part in jumping on this boat is where do you put a stop order if you get in? Example, the most recent lows here against $1,900, you are $100 an ounce over that. It's hard to get involved in the market when that occurs. You've got the pattern of higher lows, higher highs. You've got a setup where the 18-day average is over the green, which is the 100. The 100 is over the 200. I mean, it's a classic bullish setup. You had one crossover back here. You can see that. And then when you finally get over the 18-day average, it was Katie bar the door. Now, this is June gold also. So remember I told you I was going to switch over to the June. How many days do we have over the Bollinger Band? Not enough to, to get nervous. You only stay 5% of the time over it. But three days ago, you backed off and you closed back under it. So you got a couple of days up, you back under, a couple of days up you could easily come back under. What about momentum? You are overbought. To get me back into the game, so to speak, without having to worry about these lows, I need the slow stochastics to embed. Embedding means that the numbers are going 80 for sev over 80 for several days in a row. So you have today, you had yesterday, which is uh, Friday. Did you have the day before? No. So to me, the all-important day is tomorrow. If we embed, then it's game on for me and I start coming in with a buying program. If you've taken the Enhanced Bollinger Band course, you will know what it is. And I wait for that to develop. In the silver, finally, the silver's getting and trying a couple of times now recently to get back under the red line. This is where silver will gain on gold then. It could be that gold stalls or falls and the silver market starts coming alive. Silver, unfortunately, the ratio is one thing, but when you're up here, this is not a buy. This is the first challenge of the 100-day average and the upper Bollinger Band, and you're overbought. I think the pro money's coming out, not buying, but on a ratio basis, I think they're waiting in the wings saying, ah, that looks better to me. And if I'm going to buy one of the two, I might want to own the silver. Got the thinking? In the copper market, you ended the bear trend. Now, what do I mean by that? If we step back and together, just take a look here. 
This was your first challenge of the 100-day average in the Bollinger Band. As the market's collapsing, I'm trying to be a voice of reason saying to you, I think the pros are covering. You might be able to get down to the 200-day average, but you're at a zone where I think they're going to do their short covering. The pattern had been lower highs, lower lows, and you're trying to stay within the Bollinger Band. Whoops, I went too far there. Right here, you get a rally day that comes up, and that day was Friday. Now the market has an outside day up today. Outside days, I have a course on it on our website, are just so important because unless that low is taken out, the odds favor the market's going to run at the 18-day average. Plus, the new pattern is higher and low, higher high. On the next chart, wait a second. Before I get to that next chart, we've got a few more to go here. If you like what I do, do me a favor. It costs you nothing. You see the thumbs up or down? I hope you like me. <laughs> Give me the thumbs up. It helps the algorithms get us more viewers to our channel. Okay? That's it's very simple to do, and it costs you absolutely nothing. So as I look at that, I, I can make my arguments for what I have over here. When we come over to the platinum, you're again into the resistance. I mean, just throw away your emotions. It's so darn hard to do. And... You say, would I be a fresh buyer at a Bollinger Band and a 100-day average? If you do, that's your technique. It's certainly not mine. I'd be hitting you in the rib cage going, no, we're not. You'll say, but I'm going to miss it. You know how many things in your life you miss? Is this the one trade that's going to make your account? Okay. It's the one trade of your lifetime. I don't think so. And is it the wrong thing to do? By every standard I have, it is. Buying into the combination of the resistance of the 100-day average in the Bollinger Band is not something I teach. I'm certainly not saying go short. So don't write me, the market took off an IRA. You told me and I'm short. I'm not telling you to go short. It's a big difference between not wanting to be long there and being short, a world of difference. In the Palladium, it just can't get itself going. It's the one metal that just can't do anything. It's got a lower and low, higher high, sort of stuck every day at the 18-day average. You see that it's hitting it every day, not giving you any play. And in the dollar, you know, I'm, I'm hearing a lot more talk that the dollar's a major top up here. I'm inclined to be with that, by the way, because what I think is gonna happen is fear. And the fear will be that at some point the Fed is going to go into a pause, I think, earlier than it should. It'll keep our interest rates so to so. But I think other countries have a shot to go up on rates still. I don't think they're through in different areas, although maybe all of us are through at this relative pace. But we have more banks than anybody. And with all the banks we have in America, there are other shoes most certainly out there ready to have a problem. I don't believe that this is over in any manner. I do pray that what the banks have done is they've stepped in on this point and a quarter break in the, uh, in the interest rates, and that's how much it's been in the very front end, and done some hedging. Hedging's not meant to make you money. Hedging is insurance so things don't get out of control. And I know what the bankers are going to say, some of them. You know, it's already down. I don't think we're going up again. I'm going to do blah, blah, blah. Well, that is what got SVB and Signature and others in some trouble. They put onto the books monies that came in as deposits. They put it in for a longer period of time. And if the rate popped, they weren't getting the advantage of that happening with it. Remember, they're in the business of making money, but they have to hedge. I'm very scared as to what FRC means. Why? This thing just keeps falling. They just said they're giving them 30 billion for deposits. Now Jamie Dimon's out there talking to bankers again. So what are they gonna give them, another 30 billion? I think if they give them all those deposits, don't you think they wanna get a Fed assurance just like they've done on the other two banks, that all the money they do is gonna be insured there? Otherwise, if I'm part of those banks, well, what are you doing? If it's not insured, I'm, I'm concerned, all right? The stock's not zero, but it fell 47% today again, and I covered that in detail.
So you put it all together. You can see that we're waiting for the opening. I will at five o'clock do my very next video. So we at least have some reference on these. Uh, and I'm I Rapstein. You have yourself a good day. Remember, if you want to get more information from us, the free offers are there. Just move your cursor to the top here. You'll see free offers and icon. Give it a click and away you go. I'm Ira. Take care.